Good evening. Welcome to tonight's IVMF's VetNet session. Tonight we're going to be talking to veteran entrepreneurs on launching their business, the challenge that they've had. And by the way, I'm Larry Broughton. I am a veteran uh, of the U.S. Army Special Forces. Spent about eight years on Special Forces A teams. I'm a serial entrepreneur, best-selling author, and love to coach and mentor entrepreneurs. We just spent the day with IVMF's Acceleration Challenge. So it was basically a full day, intensive, of masterminding and helping people break through the challenges that they have with their business, launching it, growing their business. So what I'd like to do right now is have folks go down the row here and give an introduction of themselves and their business. Let's start right here with you, Daniel. My name's Daniel Shrub. Uh, my wife and I own Popcorn Friday. Uh, spent 28 years between the Army, Army Reserve, and the United States Marine Corps. My name's Priscilla Shrub, and Daniel and I have been married for um, 19 years this year. Wow. <laughs> and um, I was a military spouse um, for those 15 years while we were in active duty, and uh, we have three children. Good. Uh, my name is John Norton. I'm a former Army Ranger and a multiple Iraq combat veteran and inventor of rope safe edge protection system. My name is Travis Winfield with the Winfield Group real estate team powered by Sentry Residential. I spent 24 years in the Navy and retired in 2016. My name is Christy May, and I own Legend Acres, and I spent eight years in the Army. Uh, my name is Matthew Putt. Uh, I'm Vice President of Boss Security and Automation. I'm an Army veteran from uh, 10th Mountain Division. Nick Ripplinger with Battlesite Technologies and an Army veteran. Awesome. Well, thanks, folks. So we just spent the whole day <laughs> together in this acceleration program, and I loved the energy that you folks have for entrepreneurship. Um, we talked about tenacity uh, being like one of the key elements of a successful entrepreneur. So what I want you to think about here for a second is what's been your biggest challenge that you have faced since graduating the EBV program, and how has the acceleration program helped you deal with that challenge? Go ahead, Travis. Why don't you start us out? Well, I think uh, with anything, there's a famous quote. Confucius says, he who chases two rabbits catches none. Ah. And I think when you first go through this challenge, you get so many amazing ideas when you right. go through these programs. And so the big, I think, challenge is, is honing them in uh, to really dial in what's what you're great at and what your business idea is going to be focused on instead of chasing too many rabbits. Yeah, good. Yeah, so I think our biggest challenge was scaling up the manufacturing and making sure that we nailed that right. And you know, like we talked, you know, intensely about today, just pulling in everybody's different ideas from every different perspective that really gives you a clear path of how to, you know, hit the ground running when you get back to the shop. Yeah, good. How yeah, about you, John? Since uh, since graduating from the entrepreneurial boot camp for veterans, it the uh, the EBV gave me the tools to and the network to exponentially grow my business to get access to to, to to individuals such as yourself, Larry, and just an amazing veteran network. So my challenge has been from transitioning from the testing beta phase to uh -huh. product to market uh, phase. And uh, the EBV has, has opened up their resources to uh, to help get my website, uh, website operational, get my logo yeah. and branding ready. So. Uh, things that would have taken me a lot longer um, to do. Uh, the EBV's resources were able to allow me that that rapid rapid growth. Yeah. Hey, Priscilla and Daniel, are there resources that you guys have capitalized on through EBV since uh, going through the EBV program? Yeah. Um, Let's use the microphone right here. Yeah. The, uh, aside from uh, the network of individuals, um, the the uh, library of information that uh, they provide. I went through the Texas A&M program, and they uh, allow access to certain uh, data mm -hmm. tools that you can do research. And I can see where we uh, compare with other uh, companies uh, that are similar in our industry. Sure. It's a big benefit. Good. Travis, anything that you've? Well, I think that networking is key, right? I uh -huh. mean, who you meet in these programs has been just amazing. I mean, just earlier when I walked down here, I ran into a fellow uh, alumni from sure. Purdue University. And, you know, I still connect with all those guys uh, uh, periodically. So yeah. it's been a real huge benefit. Yeah. Go ahead, Matt. Tell I me. think for me, um, <coughs> EBV was a, a shot in the arm. It's something that we really could have used when we started the company up. Oh. Uh, I came into it a little bit later in the game, 
and um, it was a shot in the arm. It, it really set us off like a rocket ship when I went back, and um, since then we've, we've tripled in size, and it's much to do with IVMF and the organization as a whole. I know that after the accelerator challenge today, my tank's full again, and I'm ready to get back after it, yeah. at, after the conference, but uh, yeah. yeah, can't speak enough about the organization and what it's done for us and our success. Good, Chris, do you have other resources or programs that you've capitalized on? Uh, yes, um, absolutely. So I was kind of introduced into this whole um, program very late in the game. I had already been in business for over five years um, when I um, came to a conference last year. And then um, I applied to be in the Accelerate program. So for businesses that have already been in business, not wanting to start a business. And um, I came back with a lot of really good information from there because there was a lot of things that I knew I should be doing, but I was so wrapped up in the day-to-day -day of running a business that I wasn't doing those things. And so it let me step back and really start to strategically plan. And since then, in those past few months, um, it has made a tremendous impact in, in business in yeah, just yeah. that little bit of time. Right. Daniel, do you have something? Yes. Uh, another benefit uh, was I believe that it really validated a lot of the things that we were already doing. Um, we were introduced a little bit after we we were in business for three years and we found out about all the programs through IVMF and EBV. But a lot of the things that we see uh, uh, are validating a lot of the um, ideas and practices that we're already doing, which is uh, you know very promising for us. So. John, did you have something? Just the last one, and this is this is really, really powerful for me. It just gives you access into a community of entrepreneurs that all share. Nobody's competing here. We, we all want each other to succeed. The organization wants you to succeed. They'll give you the resources and the tools to be successful. But and, and having access into that community is incredibly powerful when you need to when you need to dig deep because entrepreneurship is not for the weak of faint of heart. It is hard, um, but uh, there is the 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 organization and the network are are there to they're your canopy uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and allow you to 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 really move your business forward and be successful. That was one of the biggest takeaways that I had from this acceleration challenge today that when we are doing our spotlight sessions and people were presenting their biggest challenges, their biggest opportunities, or their ideas, it always amazes me how vets in particular are willing to step up and help and expect nothing in return from other folks who are struggling to share their stories. That was one of my big takeaways from the Acceleration Challenge uh, today. And I run this darn thing, <laughs> you know, with these guys, right? facilitate it. I'd like to hear from you, what's your biggest takeaway from the Acceleration Challenge today? I know that the networking, but was there just like what we call aha moments for you, or is like, dang, now I get it. Do you have something you want to share with us, Nick? Yeah, it's, but it's kind of along those lines of networking. Yeah, go ahead. Is like John and I, we sell you know, very different products, but to the same market. And by being able to connect today and you know, taking this deep dive where we're completely vulnerable and sharing yeah. everything, you know, now we potentially just opened up a whole nother sales channel where, you know, we can, you know, hopefully rep his product and vice versa because we're targeting the same companies and we have the same values and the same beliefs and the same vision on everything that we went through today. Yeah, I'm really blown away. You know, a lot of people will pay the big bucks to go to Stanford or to go to Harvard and they can get a very similar education experience at a state school. But what's the real value there? It's the networking, right? It's the working with people, the tapping to people that they know and a fellow, a similar alumni association. And that's what I see here through IBMF and all of their programs is this vets helping vets make an impact in the world. Exactly. I mean, we all went through the same experiences in the military. Now we're all going through the same experiences. We're, you know, even closer than just being the military family that we were on this morning, but compared to where we are today or yeah. right now. Yeah. Matt, do you have, what was your biggest takeaway today? I think my biggest takeaway was, uh, being able to table um, our shortcomings and my issues and, and things like that, the things that are really impeding us from being the company I know we can be. Yes. And to look around and have nine other individuals or ten other individuals um, be able to give me their perspective on it so that I can then digest that, look outside the box, mm -hmm. and then hopefully find a resolution that's going to work well for us. And yeah. People were brutally honest at times, and that was it was fantastic. Yeah, it's, isn't it amazing that once you get honest with people, 
about something or you see someone else get on and say, oh, that gives me permission. I can actually open up the kimono and say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty screwed up too. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, what was your biggest takeaway today? Uh, my biggest takeaway is that while we're all in different industries and we're all in different places in our business, that all businesses experience very similar difficulties. Um, yes. they d and so being able to talk with with that and give everybody else the feedback of you've been there um, and really um, giving that, you know, you're, you're, you're basically pouring out your heart into yeah. your business. Yeah. So being able to do that in, the, in this space and know that everyone else has been there too is, um, it really helps validate where you're at yeah. um, in what you're doing and help you regain your perspective. Love that, yeah. Travis, how about you? So I'm going to steal one of your quotes today, live in life in thirds. Yes. I think that was my biggest takeaway. And Tell me what that is then. So, well, so this is my second year working with you, actually, yes. and uh, I, I've come to follow and, and look up to you. And so part of that third is surrounding yourself by people who are where you want to be, yes. number one. Then be amongst your peers. That's the other third. Uh -huh. And then what we're doing right now is paying it forward. So, yes. you know, this video is I want to be able to pay what we're learning forward and share the wealth. So for example, back in my local area, we have a, a small nonprofit called the Veterans Business Action Committee. And that's where we promote IVMF, like they pay us. Yes. It's pretty crazy. So awesome. it's, it's, it's an awesome thing. Yeah, good. Jonathan, how about you, buddy? The building the personal brand in conjunction oh, with uh, with your business, you know, I, I just I just look around and and Nick's got a quarter of a million dollars into his business. He's got his, he's got everything on the line. Christy works seven days a week yeah. walking dogs just to make this happen. You know, every it, with all the challenges you're having, you're crushing it too. Every one of us, a marriage, you know, yeah. in a business at the same time. God help, I mean, God bless you. <laughs> and, um, Both, God help and God bless. Yeah, but yes. absolutely. <laughs> and and so that that I, I just I, I I love that that just un unfaltering commitment mm -hmm. to to make their to to bring their vision into a reality. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a story there. There is a story mm -hmm. behind the business. The business is just a reflection of the entrepreneur. And so that, that really hit home with me. So you started out by saying that your big takeaway was building your personal brand while you're building your professional brand. Expand on that for a second. Kind of give us a summary of that conversation we had today. Yeah, I, I, bring, I bring the values, my personal values. My, my mission is just deeply connected to my military experience, which is to deliver the best and best quality uh, safety systems to our military and first responders. And my values of integrity, discipline, um, family, commitment, uh, quality above all, I, all, all those, the, they, they embody who I am as yes. a person and they drive every decision that I make uh, and they are the values that are ultimately going to be part of, my, that, are, that are my values for my company. Yeah, and I think one of the other lessons on this is if you are an entrepreneur and you're building your business, so for our viewers and listeners, I think it's really important to understand that when you build your personal brand as well as your professional brand, the likelihood is that, you know, what do they say? 20% of all businesses go under in the first year, 50% in the second year, and by the third year, 70% 70, 70 of all businesses go under. And if you're not building your personal brand at the same time, based on what Jonathan was just talking about here, who you are as a person, who you are as an entrepreneur, that if your business does go away, God forbid, you still have something you can capitalize on. When you have a high attractive personal brand it attracts rock stars to your business it attracts investors to your business because frankly when people invest in your business they're really investing in you right and so if people know who you are they know love and trust you they're more likely to support you when the next venture comes around right mm -hmm. priscilla what was your big takeaway today for me i think it's uh the ability just to, to take a step back from our day-to-day -day operations and family commitments and um to identify the things um, with more clarity of what we need to be deleting from our lives and delegating um, because we can only do so much um, with the finite amount of time that we have. Um, but also what was really struck me the most was um, the piece of telling our story um, yes. and writing a book um, that has never really occurred to me and the idea um, that I have a story worth sharing um, to inspire and um, give hope to other um, service members, um, I think, is something that, um, I don't know how to phrase it, I, th I think it's exciting to think yes. that um, something that I have done um, could have that kind of impact. 
Yeah, we all have a story, and every story inspires someone. And I'm just I I'm a big believer. Write a book, even if it's a small book. Write write, write a book. Uh, Priscilla touched on something I think is really important: the three Ds: delete, delegate, defer. Did that resonate with anybody else about this? Absolutely. Okay, Nick, why don't you explain explain what the process was there? Yeah, so it's making a list of everything that you do on a daily basis. Right. And then breaking that down to things that you're great at. So your list dwindles. And out of that thing, the list of things that you're great at, you make a list of the things that you love. Right. Which, you know, now gets even smaller. Right. And then you got to find a way to delete, delegate, or uh, defer. Defer. Thank you. Anything that's not in your love column. Exactly. Yeah. And focusing so, on your strengths kind of goes right along with that. Yeah, exactly. Imagine if every day you got to do things that you loved. Holy smokes, how would your life be different, right? And when you do that for the team members that are in your organization, when they come into work every day, you see productivity go up. You see morale go up. You see turnover go down. All great things in business, right? Anybody absolutely. else have something on the, on the 3Ds? Travis, did you want to jump in on that? Well, I, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, that's, I, can, I think that's the critical piece to any successful entrepreneur. Um, I've actually been working on that since last year, and one of the things that I've come to say a lot is I think truly successful people surround themselves but that do great at what you suck at. That's right. And so by deleting, delegating, deferring, you're basically bringing in people who do great at what you're not great at, yeah. which then shores up your business. Yeah, yeah, very good. Dan, what was your big takeaway from, from today? Oh my gosh, uh, a lot of these people stole my thunder. But um, personalize it. <laughs> I uh, the w when running a business, there's a lot of things because we're wearing so many hats yes. that you know we've got so much going around in our heads. And uh, when I came here today, things were presented uh, so plain and simply, and it, it it came across so profoundly to me, uh, being a marine. You know that might you <laughs> resonate know, going to yeah <laughs> <laughs> i needed that but um it it, it was presented and i was going to touch on the um uh, uh delete de delegate and um defer, uh, defer. Uh -huh. it 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 would help make uh that process for me uh my uh running the business a lot more efficient because sure. you know we're wearing so many hats that you know we have so much going on that sometimes they come you know, conflict with each other. And, you know, we're starting to do that where we're hiring people to take certain positions where they're specializing in a certain thing as opposed to uh, working um, broadly across, you know, several responsibilities. But, you know, we're slowly uh, turning those hats over to other people. Um, so this list, the, 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 the list that we were talking about where you list all your tasks and then uh, talk th about the ones that you're great at and then list the ones that you love and then delegate the rest, you know, I think is really profound. And that's one of the first things that I think I'm going to start working on when, it, when we get back. So, Yeah, I think that's so important because oftentimes we do things just because we've always done it that way, right? But sometimes we just have to learn when to stop doing stuff, right? Jonathan, go ahead. I, to, to, to expand on that a little bit, uh, the uh, the Colby assessment, the first thing I did yes. after taking the Colby assessment was give it to my board. Uh, and awesome. I, 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 my, my, my board and I ran through this, uh, the very same Colby exercise, and, and now one of my board members is filling a significant need because I'm a, I'm a high quick start and an effective implementer, um, but uh, – not so much on the fact finder, <laughs> yeah, you know, and the data that's or even important. worse than the follow through. <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly, and the follow through. So, uh, so uh, having that tool to be able to uh, find an, an individual and put them in a position that complements my skill sets, so we can build an effective team together, uh, was was incredibly profound. Yeah, good. Go ahead, uh, just Nick. real quick, I think that's what's where the real value is: is all the pre work, so we show up and be effective today. The same way the EBV program, you, you know, go through this coursework online so that on day one, you know, you can hit it out of the park and hit the ground running. Isn't that just a great lesson on life, though? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Shouldn't be preparing constantly for the battle, right? So I appreciate you guys doing that. So let me ask you this, and then we're going to start to wrap up here. Do, after spending the day with each other today, doing the learning, having some time of reflection, going through your ahas, 
do any of you view yourself or your business differently now than you did yesterday? Or do you have a different vision of where your organization can be a year from now, three years from now, than you did yesterday? I think with anything like this, it's, it's all about tools for your toolbox, right? I think there is no uh, cookie-cutted way to do business. I think everybody has a, a recipe that's right for them. Yeah. And so what today really did for me was uh, look at all my you know, fellow entrepreneurs here and take different lessons from each of them. And I'm going to put them in my toolbox. And you know, I, I'm going to pull them out when I need to and where it's going to be a applicable. So yeah, absolutely it's changed. Good. Anyone else? I think we went over so much. We're still kind of trying to digest. We've been done <laughs> yeah. for about 20 minutes. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> It <laughs> feels like that, yeah. You know, it, it's kind of. It gave me a big confidence boost. Good. I won't lie, like my confidence was pretty low before I showed up with everything yeah. that's going on. But like you realize you're not alone in this fight, mm -hmm. right? You know, we all exchanged business cards. We expanded our network. We we learned. We shared so much that it's honestly gonna take some time to kind of yeah, well, whatever the word I am <laughs> I'm looking for, kind of yeah. wrap yeah. your head around everything that went over today. But yeah, I definitely think that this is gonna change the trajectory for Battle Site today. Good. Anyone else have a different perspective on themselves or their business or anybody? Okay. Matt, I'd like to ahead. hit on <coughs> what both these gentlemen said. Um, it definitely gave me a lot more ammo for my magazine. Um, I think any time that we can gain knowledge from each other, we're going to go home to different areas of the country, right, yeah. and take all these tools back, and we're going to implement these tools to create opportunity for our employees, for ourselves, for our communities. Yeah. And then, <coughs> you know, coming here, you know, I spend on average 12 out of a 14-hour day totally alone, and to come here today and see other people again that are going through the same issues sure. and, and have the same concerns and the same stressors, and yeah. to go, hey, I'm really not alone, and yeah. I've got a lot of brothers and sisters to my left and right that are still out there, yeah. and to make that connection, it's going to prove vital uh, down the road. Yeah. Anyone else want to share before? You Just another example of living your life in thirds or surrounding yes. yourself with uh, with with people in in chunks of thirds. Just you know, Nick's on the verge of, of blowing up, or he has. And uh, in and a good way, by the it, way. It, yes, in a positive <laughs> way. And from a uh, from a revenue person sales perspective, and uh, and to know you know keeping that end of you know keeping keeping Nick as uh, as a mentor to a certain degree as sure. I as I you know, my journey is is getting ready to mm -hmm. to, to really launch. Um, so that's inspiring, but it, it also just the the collaboration with uh, with my fellow entrepreneurs that uh, that gives me a perspective that I like uh, I, I don't normally uh, I, I don't always have that. So uh, that's incredibly powerful. Um, I I think that's that's kind of the big takeaway for for me. Good. What I'd like, Christy, do you have something? I do. I do. Um, and with that too is um, it sometimes your perspective is limited by your day-to-day -day. and so coming here kind of lets you see that there's a whole lot more out there it's bigger yeah. than than what you really think that it is um, at that moment so getting out of it to come see that um, helps uh, just in personal growth and business growth too yeah that's awesome okay Trev you got it okay what I'd like to do now is just as we wrap up here is I'd like to get kind of a tidbit from each of you or a word of advice for any transitioning veterans or military folks if they decide they want to get into the entrepreneurial space. Love to hear that. Like for, for me, one of the things I'd like to encourage everybody to do is to, if you're going into an entrepreneurial arena, surround yourself with people who are bolder and brighter than you are. Join a mastermind, get a mentor, and don't be afraid to fail. Because if you're failing, that's just that necessary struggle called learning. Embrace the learning reevaluate, reassess, and then move out and do something great with that. So do you want to just go down the row? Well, you Nick, stole you all the good ones. But, uh, <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is actually getting out there and start. Like, don't overanalyze everything. You That's just right. got to get out there and do, and then, of course, surround yourself with people who've been there, done that, and can help you along the way. That's good advice. Good. Matt. I think any veteran that's getting out of the service, you're already part of one of the smallest demographics in the entire world. Yeah, You're going to get out. If you have an idea, don't be scared. Believe in yourself. You've already gone through some of the hardest times of your life, and you're going to be much stronger going into realizing that dream. Very good. Christy. 
Um, if you are thinking about going into business and you're not even sure, even if it's just an idea, get into a program um, like EBV um, and explore it. Sit down and really kind of work through it and see if it's something that you where, where you want to go because everybody up here probably started not in the same business that they're in today mm -hmm. um, because things change. And so you can get stuck in that mindset of this is what it's going to look like and it can be so much more. So um, find a program and really kind of grow with it. Yeah, awesome. Good. Yeah, I would say first off, if you're an entrepreneur and you're a veteran, you're already one leg up to most people because we are ingrained with discipline. And I can truly say, I think that is a cornerstone to be a successful entrepreneur because mm -hmm. having the discipline to to work your day and, and implement systems and just get things done, quite frankly, is why I think a lot of businesses do fail. And I think we have a leg up. Now, that being said, I'm gonna give a more specific piece of advice that was in instrumental to me. And that is structuring your day. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people kind of, go into their day like kind of knocking off the gal alligators and uh, chomping at their feet. If there's one strategy that I was taught that's been game changing for me is, uh, for me I'm a relationship business, right? So every yes. day I have a theme of the day. So Mondays I'm calling my VIPs, that's right. my people I'm trying to do. Tuesdays I'm calling, um, that's my terrific Tuesday update. I'm updating my clients. Wednesday I'm calling all my leads. Thursday I'm calling my past clients and Friday, I'm calling my fellow business owners to work out uh, to work out quid pro quo relationships. Yeah, that was critical to my growth. That's awesome. That's a great tidbit, Jonathan. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll just I'll just get real. You know, you as, after I left the military, uh, I, I had learned all the skills to be successful. Uh, but in the uh, in the corporate drag, and there is nothing wrong with uh, with with uh, with the job or in corporate America. Uh, it just wasn't a good fit for me, and I forgot all the things like. Uh, discipline, getting up early in the morning, taking mm -hmm. care of yourself, care, and uh, so I, I learned the hard way. I, yeah. I learned the hard way, and uh, and it wasn't until that I began to uh, apply those skill sets that I learned in the military, like getting out of bed, exercising, planning, you know, mm -hmm. having a, having a plan and executing that, not being afraid to adapt the plan to changing conditions because the enemy always has a vote, the market always has a vote, um, so. I, my my piece of advice to, uh, to to soldiers leaving the military is that you have the tools to be successful, uh, and and you have the network through the IVMF through the uh, the EBV program to uh, to to allow you to take those tools to do something great because we all have something great within us. So. Great, Priscilla. Um, I'm going to touch on maybe more of the human side, but <laughs> as a um, spouse and spouse working together. Um, it's pretty challenging, sure. um, but um, I think it's important to make sure that your family is all in. Yes. Um, if they're not all in, it's going to be really challenging. Um, even our our son at the time when he had told us this, he was I think he was maybe 12 years old, and he said, "Popcorn Friday is like the fourth child, mom." <laughs> 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 you know, and so they recognize that um, their role also in our business, and so. Um, ensuring that everyone is on the same page and knows what that vision is for the future and why you're you're choosing this path is so critical for them accepting it and um, being all in. That's good. Good, Daniel. Veterans make the best business owners and entrepreneurs because everything that we learned in the military, uh, almost all of it applies to being a business owner or an entrepreneur. Uh, you know. Boots to business, when I went through TAPS, it helped me uh, pivot, actually, to something else. Um, and uh, IVMF, every time somebody comes into our store and they're a veteran and, and they're thinking about starting a business, I'm always talking about IVMF and EBV. Look it up. Uh, research the programs. Um, I'm, it's like I'm taking, uh, you know, a precious gift and I want to share it with yeah. everybody that I can. Yeah. Um, we're so blessed to, uh, and we're so grateful for the opportunities that have been shared with us through IVMF and um, EBV and we're looking forward to taking advantage of as much as we can so yeah. that we can be successful and then we can go on to help others um, in our community, you know, I, I st I'm starting a nonprofit to to help build a memorial in our community for um, for veterans, 
And a lot of the things that I learned in the military and in, in business through IVMF and EBV are applying to this nonprofit. You know, I want to give back and I want to help spread the word, the good news about uh, veteran entrepreneurship. Yeah, I totally agree uh, on this. As I said earlier, it's not going to be government who's going to save our bacon. It's going to be the entrepreneur class. And to me, the entrepreneurs are our civilian warrior class. And um, I just think it's an honor to be able to serve entrepreneurs and to serve our communities. So I would just encourage you, if you're a listener or you're a viewer of this and you're a part of the EBV or IVMF family, there are tons of resources. And uh, I've been involved with, uh, with IVMF for a lot of years at this point, have participated in a lot of programs. And we have seen multi-million dollar businesses born through these programs and launched and legacy, family legacies are being changed through the efforts and the support of IVMF. Multi-generational curses of poverty have been broken through IVMF. And to me, that it is more value in that than in the world treasury, okay? Um, so I wanna thank you folks for taking your time to, 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 uh, to watch this, to listen to this. Um, please reach out to somebody uh, if you're an entrepreneur. Share the good news, as Daniel put it, about uh, IVMF. If you've got comments or questions, go ahead and please leave them here um, in the comment section below. We'll be glad to respond to you. Uh, so again, thanks everybody. Thanks IVMF. Thanks to everybody who participated in the Accelerator Challenge. God bless you all. Go get them. Yes.